Oh, I think I need these for the word of talk. Of course, this is kind of for this run of the show, the final word. And the word is vote. Why would it not be the word? Now, a lot of people kind of overlook the fact that for most of human history, in the history of nations, there's never been such thing as a one man, one vote. Most of human history has been guided by kings and emperors and such, and the people don't get to make those decisions. So we enjoy something actually very special in human history, the ability for us individually to cast a vote and affect who may lead us into the future. The big problem is most people only pay attention on a year like this when there's a presidential campaign going on. They seem to think that that's what the vote is all about, some sort of popularity contest. But this year is different, and not simply because of all the reasons that everyone else will tell you that your life depends upon it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In any year that ends with a zero, 2000, zero, zero, let me get that right, there is a census, in case you hadn't noticed. And it's important to fill out the census because it decides many things like where government uh, investments will go. Will it go to your district or to some other district because the demand is greater? And if you don't count the people and their needs for various resources, well, you don't know how to allocate them. But another thing happens every time there is a census year and you vote. Whoever gets elected this year, not to the presidency, but to down ballot races from the bottom all the way up to the top of the state house, those people get to decide based on the results of the census, how your state is going to be divided up into voting districts. And you wonder how in a state, for instance, like perhaps Wisconsin, where most voters are apparently democratic, and a state that has leaned pretty liberal the last time. How did that possibly happen? The reason why it happened is that after we elected a Barack Obama, every thought, everybody thought our work is done and didn't realize that the very next election would be on a zero year, a year when the, when the census took place. And when that census took place, it meant that whoever was in office in the following year would be able to design the voting districts or to design programs that would keep people from voting. And so you wonder how the minority party manages to pull all of these stunts like gerrymandering and reducing voting rights. The reason why they do it is because you forgot to vote down the ballot. You don't just vote for president. You're voting for everyone who's going to have any effect on your life in the future. So you don't want people who essentially will bend the rules, will cheat in order to gain control, to be smarter than everybody else, depending on the fact that nobody will vote the down ballot that no one will pay attention to what happens down the ballot. So when you go in there, or when you more preferably get your ballot in the mail and you tear it open like it's Christmas morning, and you very, very carefully fill it all out so that there's no contesting of your valid, validity of your ballot, make sure that you go all the way down the ballot, all the way down to dog catcher because that's going to affect your life first. Whatever the president does, that's going to affect your life next. But what affects your life first is whatever happens to you locally. So vote your way all the way down the ballot. Now me, I'm not going to tell you how to vote. Personally, 
I would never vote for an evil, lying, racist, misogynist, narcissistic, sociopathic, cowardly, incompetent, lazy, traitorous, fat, balding sack of moron. But likewise, I would never vote for anyone who is a member of the criminal organization that unquestionably supports the evil, lying, racist, misogynist, narcissistic, sociopathic, cowardly, incompetent, lazy, traitorous, impotent, fat, balding, short-fingered sack of moron. But that's just me. Vote your conscience. <laughs>